this. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Well, here it comes, boys and girls. It's season 14 of Red Arrow. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for 14 years. It's actually hard to believe if you've been listening to the news that we're all still alive. So if you made it this far, congratulations. Well, we just rolled through the state line, man. We're officially in Wyoming, about to kick off the seven day hunt. But we're gonna go get settled into camp and uh, meet up with our guide. We got two days, man. It's not it's not opening day till day after tomorrow. So we're gonna relax a little bit, man. This is always a laid back hunt. We like to kick the season off with. We love going out to 7J to get the Red Arrow season kicked off. In fact, when I think about opening day now, I think about 7J. And we're rolling deep with some celebrities this year. I mean, we've got Mr. David Blanton himself. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. Welcome to Wyoming. Tyler Jordan from Team Realtree. How are you, man? How are you doing? It's good to see you. The bone collector, Michael Waddell. What's your robo, Robocop right there? Yeah. What's up, man? What's going on, brother? He's seen you in a forever, dude. Martin and Godwin from the Duck Commanders. And the biggest celebrity of all, Lil Sebastian. Yep, but y'all thought he was dead. Y'all don't watch Parks and Rec. It's like the second best show you can watch. Ron Swanson is my spirit animal. I'm just throwing that out there. There's only one thing I hate more than liars. Skim milk, which is water lying about being milk. Well, I'm mean as gravel, I'm poor as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. I ain't changing, I'm a stubborn man. So can you love me like I am? Can you love me, baby, like I am? Man, it's great to be in Wyoming. It is hard to believe, like I said, that we've been doing this for 14 years. And the rest of the world is trying to push for that new normal, but here in the country, we like the old normal just fine, which for us is basically chasing stuff down that we like to eat and shooting an arrow into it. In fact, for the past 14 years, I've been chasing critters all over this great country of ours with my bow from the Rocky Mountains to the farm fields of Iowa my home state of Virginia, and all the way out across the Pacific Ocean, hunting down some big old creatures out there a couple different times, back when they used to let people like me fly. I mean, what I'm saying is the only mask I own is a turkey mask, and I don't even like putting that thing on. And for any of y'all watching the show, which I highly doubt that are still worried about the COVID, let me just let y'all off the hook. I think by this point, the Democrats have pretty much called it off until they need to scare y'all again. Besides, if you're from the country, you're most likely full of one of three things, venison, bush light, or Jesus, all of which kill the COVID-19 virus, which definitely wasn't genetically enhanced to strike fear into the hearts of the American people to introduce socialism slowly over time. So y'all take a break from stockpiling ammo and ivermectin and come kill some deer with us in Wyoming. I use SKB because unfortunately, I'm not the only one that handles my gear. Like the baggage handler that might have done one bong rip too many on his lunch break. Sorry, bro. Or when your wife drives anything without a backup. Watch my bouquet. Love your face. Bye. SKB, the world's best cases. Opening day of both seasons is a big deal. Opening day of any season is really a big deal, whether you're talking about elk or squirrel or anything in between. And 7J, we have chosen to come out there and make that our opening day of deer season for the last several years. And it's because of the laid back atmosphere, the great people, and the deer hunt's not too bad either. We even get out to 7J a full two days early just to hang out with the guys and chill, shoot our bows, and get ready for that opening morning. Oh, what you think, boy? Are they in trouble or what? I don't think so. Well, I hope we can find all our areas. Oh, Y'all are wondering what happened to my wrist and why it's all wrapped up like a freaking gordita? It's because I got a little bit of arthritis in it and overuse issues from telling Democrats they're number one when I go down the highway. 
just want to say that Powerade cools you off on a hot summer day on the bow range. It is You know, Jeff and Deb are some great people, and for all their years of service for being so good to Realtree, we were doing things a little bit different this year, and Martin and Godwin and some of the guys were putting on a big barbecue dinner for everybody at 7J, Jeff, Deb, all the ranch hands, all the hunting guides. We were going to have a big old throwdown. The Hoyt is all dialed in, man. It's time to put the women and children to bed and go looking for dinner. Or breakfast in the case of opening morning, I guess. I mean, as long as I've been doing this, I still anticipate that opening day, still get butterflies and look forward to it, especially when you're hunting in a good place as 7J. And this particular night before opening day, I couldn't sleep at all. Tried really hard, but 3.30 rolled around and my alarm clock went off and my eyes were still wide open. I'm gonna need this. <laughs> I'm not sure, dude. <laughs> Even though we were dragging rear end a little bit, we were still excited to get up in that tree stand. The problem with this season is, it looks a lot like last season. They had a drought just like they did last year. The food sources are a little bit spotty. The alfalfa is not quite as lush in some areas. And honestly, we just weren't seeing as many deer as we were used to at 7J the first couple years. Show y'all this picture of this buck real quick. He's a good one, he's been coming by. That's, um, oh no, wait a minute. That's, that was David Blanton training. All kidding aside, here's a, a picture of the trail camera picture of that buck. He'll work, won't he? Mm. <clears throat> Got that time action. Mm, a little 10 point action. Mm. Got that. Got that good G3 action going. Come on, lady luck, be good to us. We'll get a game plan together though. Even if we have to go poach the neighbors, we'll figure out something. The thing about deer hunting is just because a bachelor group of bucks walks by this tree a couple days in a row, doesn't mean they're gonna do the same thing on the third day. They could get something different in their mind, especially out in all this vast country out here in Wyoming with the food source at the same time being spotty they can end up anywhere. You just gotta try to do the best you can to hunt the ditches, hunt the topography, hunt the little veins of trees that are connecting these different parts. And really, like I always say, there's a whole lot of luck involved in whitetail deer hunting. But we're putting ourselves in the best spots that we know how to get these bucks, this one bachelor group of bucks that we're hunting to walk by our tree stand. Rip Gamble's here for limited range hanging system. You simply take your nail, uh, hanging system, place it on the wall, grab your deer, is that thing sturdy? Shoot, yeah, it's sturdy. Man, I think I'm gonna just stick with full range. Pretty big contrast from this morning's hunt. This morning we were down in a little drainage, a bunch of oak trees. Now we're out in the pines in the wide open. I'm gonna tell you what, we better see a deer this evening because we can see a long way. I can see my house. Hey, kids. It's good deer running around. It's just not the numbers that you're typically used to seeing in Wyoming on this particular farm. So if we don't get blown out of the tree, maybe we'll see some deer. We had a couple Spartan picks of the 110 point that we were looking for, and my guide had seen this deer a couple times too while he was scouting. I wish we were in a tree stand over in those pines. Okay. And it 
looks like the deer we're looking for has arrived. We're sitting in a tree that this deer has walked under several times in the last couple weeks, but he's got to do a lot right to get to us in bow range from where he's at right now. This we had some action. That was a that was a nice ten point. I don't know if it was the one from the trail cameras in velvet or not. I had to look at it a little bit closer, but it was a good ten point. That little tight eight wasn't too shabby either. It was rolling with it. Oh. Makes it tough though, man. This uh, this big open country like you just saw, it's hard to, because one day he could walk right under this tree. One day he could walk 600 yards over there. I mean, there's no, there's no definitive deal that these deer have to do, especially when the key food sources are kind of spotty all over the place. But that was a good evening, man. I saw some good deer. That's why it's so hard to make a TV show doing this stuff, is because you're dealing with a wild animal. Imagine if you were an actor and you're set to shoot a big scene for this entertaining TV show you're about to make, and the other actors didn't show up 72% of the time. Be tough, wouldn't it? Welcome to my world. That's why I say this is the only true form of reality television left. Or maybe that has ever existed. Well, after putting in a long, hard day in the stand, and after not sleeping a wink the night before, that night I crashed and crashed hard, man. I was, I was snoozing good. Probably a little too good since I slept through our alarms the next day. And everybody in camp just left and didn't wake me and Lucas up. They just let us sleep in. Sometimes I like to go hunting three hours early. I mean, uh, late. It throws the deer's pattern off, you know, they can't figure you out. See, I, I, at first I sort of took it as an insult, and I was like, man, that's, my friends left me hanging. They let me sleep through my alarm clock. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, no, they probably just think I'm a hunting genius. And it's all part of my strategy. And that's what I'm gonna let them keep thinking. We got to a tree that we had hung some summits in in preparation for the wind we had. The only thing we had to hope at this point is that the deer stayed in the alfalfa just a little bit later, but we were far enough away from the field where I thought at least we'd see some deer movement that morning. For all your form aware needs, go to redarrowtv.com. Again, it was just a really slow hunt. Even where we could see a long way, we saw zero deer moving. And my guy, Zach, he was up on the mountaintop, glassing everywhere, and he barely saw any deer. But about mid-morning, a lonely doe started strolling our way. I wonder what's gonna happen to her since the hunting's been so slow and we haven't seen much action yet. And there's no other deer around and it's late morning.
Mega Meat Broadhead effectiveness at its pinnacle right there. We gotta run that back and see that again, instant replay. You don't want Killer to know something's wrong with you. And like my man Michael Waddell says, we might have got here late, but better tardy than absent. <laughs> that was worse than the pump shotgun to the freaking, I'm talking about right in the boiler room. Was that not cool? That was that big dude. Gosh, just man, what a, gave it up. And that, hey, this is the perfect, the perfect scenario. We're in a field. She's dead 20 yards down in the woods. The mega meat has checked in. I know we weren't very high off the ground, but I don't think I've ever seen this much blood come out of a white-tailed deer in such a short amount of time, which is ideally what you want. You want the most blood to be outside of the animal in the shortest amount of time. Lights out. I'm alive, I'm happy, I'm a doe eating oak leaves, and then all of a sudden, I'm with the deer version of Jesus. That's what we want to see. Oh yeah, man, she's dumping. There she is right there. My gosh, I mean, I mean, put it on her too. Gracious sakes, quarter and two, quarter and two. Absolutely smoked. And then so, especially people that aren't, or that are new to archery, especially new to hunting, that's the, that's the, the spot that you want to aim for is the exit. A lot of guys will get something that's a little quarter and, and aim where they would on a broadside 3D target and end up, you know, blood trailing a liver shot deer for, you know, three, four, five, six hours. First deer with the mega meat. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, we don't broke ice, boys and girls, and I'm a big fan of breaking ice with a doe kill. Now, it's not always appropriate to do it, but when a doe is isolated all by herself and you're not gonna disturb anything, especially if you're not gonna hunt that stand the next day, whack them and stack them, man. You get your mojo going, you get her blood flowing, you get your blood flowing. I mean, it's all, it's primal, man. You gotta feel it down inside like old Matthew McConaughey. Get you a little bit of I'm telling you, I was right about once you get the killing started, because when we got back to camp that day, none other than Mr. Tyler Jordan himself had killed a nice buck. Pitfalls, these does. It's small bugs. Fall right in our lap. This buck comes out and it doesn't look like he's gonna give Tyler much of a shot, but Tyler slipped it right in there, quartering away, and smoked this deer. I can see him. It's wide open country out here. Heck yeah, man. I, I think this is the deer we saw. We saw up here yesterday, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was that one that was where he wanted to come out exit wise. Yep. I, I just wish I'd been maybe three or four inches, you know, just a little further, further up, but. I mean, he didn't go nowhere. I know. And he was bleeding good too. He was. We're not done out here in Wyoming by a long shot, so we'll see y'all next week. We got a whole lot more killing to do on Wyoming part two. And before y'all leave today, don't forget to slide into the online store. We got all kind of new t-shirts, hats, apparel of all kinds. Might even have a DVD or two if y'all are still into that kind of technology. See y'all next week. <laughs>